A number of years ago, a movie came out called Hidden Figures that told about the previously unknown exploits of a group of black female mathematicians who did the calculations that were essential for the success of the initial space missions flown by the NASA astronauts. The problem is when the capsule moves from an elliptical orbit to a parabolic orbit. There's no mathematical formula for that. Without this conversion, the capsule stays in orbit. We can't bring it back home. Euler's method. There's a hidden figure in this week's total portion as well that doesn't get enough press. Moses, Moshe, at the request of the Jewish people, sends 12 spies to check out the Holy Land. Ten of them come back with a terrible report, which unfortunately is believed by the men. But two disagree. One's not a surprise, Joshua Yehoshua, he's Moshe's apprentice. But one's a big surprise, even to the other spies. Kalev also says, don't listen to those other guys. We can do this. God says so. But the people listen to the other spies, and they're all punished. But God says, Kalev, he gets a reward. My servant Kalev was possessed of a different spirit. One commentator says that the different spirit to which God was referring wasn't a what, it was a who. It was Kalev's wife. You see, many years earlier when Kalev's wife was a little girl, she approached her father and said, Dad, you're worse than Pharaoh, which would be like a little Jewish girl approaching her father nowadays saying, Dad, you're worse than Hitler. How could she say that? Her father said, what? And she explained. Dad, respectfully, when Pharaoh issued his decree to kill all the Jewish baby boys, that decree was only against boys. But when you separated from mom because you couldn't bear to have a Jewish baby boy, you were in effect decreeing against Jewish baby boys and girls. So you're worse. And by the way, I had a prophecy from God that you're going to get back together with mom and the Jewish savior is going to be born. He kissed her on the head, got back together with his wife and a big wedding so that everyone could see it, so that the people who had followed his lead and also separated from their wives would get back together. So that little girl, Miriam, was responsible not just for the birth of her brother, Moshe, but for the births of many Jewish babies. A few months later, it's all over. Moshe had been born prematurely. Now it's his due date. The Egyptians are coming by to go find him. They're gonna take that baby if it's a boy and kill him. So his parents have no choice. They have to put him in a basket and bid him adieu. It's all over. He has no chance of surviving a three-month-old baby in a basket in the river. The Talmud tells us that her father summoned her and said to Miriam, after tapping her on the head, what happened to your prophecy? Her mother was crying. She built a little chuppah, a wedding canopy, on top of his little basket and said, I'm not going to see you get married. And her brother, Aaron, was also crying. Only Miriam walked along the Nile. The Torah tells us why? To see what would happen to Moshe. Not to see how he was going to die, to see how he was going to live. She knew because she had the prophecy, God's going to save him and I got to see it. Wait a minute. Is that the Egyptian princess herself? Pharaoh's daughter saving him, taking him out of the basket? Is she bringing him over to me? Can I find the Jewish mother to nurse him? Of course I can. I'll bring him back to his mother and then I'll bring him back to the palace. How do you like that? Didn't matter that all of her family members had given up hope. Miriam didn't. And that's where Kalev got that strength from, from his wife. That was the different spirit that he had. He knew when all those other 10 spies, all those other guys were saying, are you kidding me? We have no chance. Look at the people who live there. They're giants. They will stomp us like cockroaches. He said, I know. I learned this from my wife. When God says something, it's cash. Take it to the bank. And that's what he tells the people. God said, we're gonna win. We're going to win. He learned that faith believing in God no matter what the rest of the world says, the doubters and the naysayers. Learned it from his wife, and we should learn it from her as well. That's it. Let's type it up. <laughs>